Hello and welcome to the episode 333 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we have an arrest, several media appearances and, sadly, a death. On the 29th of November 1960, according to Beatlesbible.com, Paul McCartney and Pete Best were arrested in Hamburg for arson. According to Mark Lewison's The Complete Beatles Chronicle, instead, the event happened the night afterwards, after the band had performed another evening at the Kaiser Keller. But these are details. Let's dig into what happened. After their relationship with Bruno Koschmeider had soared because of their frequent visits at Peter Eckhorn's Top Ten Club, a competing venue just down the road from the Kaiser Keller, see episode 303 for that, and after Koschmeider had played an instrumental part in the deportation of George Harrison, more details in episode 325, the Beatles had decided to start working for Eckhorn. The top ten was better looking, had a more refined clientele, the stage was better, the pay was better, and to top it off, the lads had been offered better accommodation quarters in the attic above the club. Their contract with Koschmeider was to be terminated on the 30th of the month, and so, Paul and Pete decided to start moving their things from their dingy living space at the back of the Bambi Kino Cinema to the band's new room. Since the electricity was off, the two decided to light a piece of the falling, rotting wallpaper. It was just enough to see, and when the fire was eventually extinguished by the dampness in the wall, the two had already left. There was no damage apart from a burn mark on the wall, but Koschmeider was furious. He reported McCartney and Bass to the police, claiming that they had tried to set the cinema on fire. The two were arrested and spent the night in jail. They would be deported on the next day. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, George Harrison and John Lennon on guitar and voice, and Paul McCartney on bass and voice, performed both a lunchtime and an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. In 1962, the band, now in its definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, played another gig at the majestic Barrow in Birkenhead. It was their 12th since the 28th of June, see episode 179 for more information. On the 29th of November 1963, I Want to Hold Your Hand was the fifth Beatles single to be released, achieving yet another first. EMI had received a record of 1 million advance orders, 500,000 of which had been received just one day after the announcement of its release, on the 5th of November 1963. And yet, I Want to Hold Your Hand didn't go straight to number one, due to a resurgence of sales of the band's previous single, She Loves You. A temporary setback, if you want to call it that way. If anything, the success of I Want to Hold Your Hand proved that the four were a prominent force in popular music, on both sides of the Atlantic. That night, the Beatles performed at the ABC Cinema in Huddersfield for their autumn tour. Before the second show, they were interviewed for Music Box, a closed-circuit program that the Huddersfield Tape Recording Society taped and broadcast in local hospitals. Fun fact! The interviewer, Gordon Kay, would become famous in Britain some 20 years later as star of the sitcom Hello, Hello. 1964. You thought John Lennon's contribution to BBC's Not Only But Also was confined to some surrealistic footage and a brief appearance in a comedy sketch? Think again. This evening, starting at 8.30 pm, from Studio One of the Television Centre in London, John gave a reading of several bits of his book in his own right, alone or with show hosts Dudley Muir and Norman Rossington, in front of a live audience. John also appeared during the show finale, 
running across the screen. When the ordeal was over, John joined George Harrison for drinks, and the two went to the Crazy Elephant Club to relax. And relaxing I will not after this podcast is completed. More ideas are already being worked on, and more music-related content will soon be on your way. Of course, you could sit in your sofa and enjoy, but wouldn't it be better if you could be instrumental in the creation of all this? If you want to see what you can do, please visit www.simonmas.com support. Apart from a list of things to do, you will also see how you can get the limited edition NFTs with the deluxe version of What A Fab Day, with hours of extra material. Thank you for doing your bit for music while I do mine. We get a different BBC commitment in 1965. Between 2.15 and 2.45 pm, the Beatles were at the Aeolian Hall in London to tape an interview with Brian Matthew. The interview, edited in three parts, was to be included in the BBC Radio Saturday Club show aired on the 25th of December between 10 and 11.30 am. Apart from the usual chat, the Beatles recorded an impromptu vocal rendition of the programme's signature tune, Saturday Jump. Fifteen seconds of the performance opened the show, segued into the usual version, performed by Ted Heath and his orchestra. On the 29th of November 1966, the Beatles got their hands dirty, so to speak, with more work on Strawberry Fields Forever at Abbey Road's EMI Studios. Between 2.30 and 8.00 pm, after a lengthy rehearsal, the band taped Take 5, a false start, and Take 6 of the rhythm track. John overdubbed the vocal track on Take 6, slowing down the tape, before the result was reduced into Take 7 and marked best for further production work. Editing time in 1967. On one hand, the magical mystery tour footage was edited at Norman's Film Productions. On the other, between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, at the EMI Studios, producer George Martin and engineer Jeff Emerick edited and mixed down the 1967 Christmas disc for the Beatles' official fan club. And we have to close the episode paying homage to George Harrison, who died of cancer on the 29th of November 2001. I'll spare you the sad details because, well, they are sad. I'll also gloss over the theory behind the cancer resurgence, because I promised I wouldn't have basked in nonsense in this podcast, unless it had played a significant part in the band's history. I will tell you, though, that George died peacefully, surrounded by his family. Well, I guess this concludes this episode. Join me tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.